We cannot achieve peace in Syria without justice. When we talk about peace, we talk about sustainable peace. It cannot be achieved without accountability. After all this crime, that's, it's now it's seven, more than seven million Syrians are abroad and the hundreds of thousands of people that were missing, tortured, it's faced the sexual violence. So with all this crime, people cannot be, uh, feel satisfaction. It's like uh, without, uh, it's like provide them kind of, of, uh, of hope that one day that they will, will, will see their, these criminals before the court. We want to raise the awareness that still today, torture is a very regular tool of governance by the Syrian government. And this, this cannot be on the table for peace negotiations. You will not have a sustainable peace if this question has not been dealt with. The reason why, um, when it comes to Syria, there is no international justice mechanism in place is that the road to the ICC, to the International Criminal Court, uh, that would be responsible um, and that would have the mandate to hear these kind of cases is blocked because Syria is not a state party to the Rome Statute. Um, and uh, the other way to, to come to the ICC by way of a Security Council mandate by the United Nations is blocked by a veto um, by Russia and, and China so far. So that means we have one of the gravest crimes of our times um, torture in a, in a systematic and, and widespread manner that goes beyond all imagination and we have no international justice mechanism. For these reasons there exists the concept of universal jurisdiction which means that crimes that are so grave that they kind of shake the consciousness of, of, of humankind um, can be dealt with by all courts in all countries. We all agree that the best way to deal with these crimes would be in very fair and transparent uh, proceedings in Syria itself. But we all know um, that this is currently not a, not a possibility. So really the only option that we have is national courts in jurisdictions outside of Syria. The evidence depends on uh, witnesses. The recently they are in, in Europe and uh, maybe thousands of uh, survivors, detention, torture, sexual violence survivors are uh, now in Europe. Caesar photo, it's, uh, uh, it's a photo about 11,000 uh, victims in Syria just died under torture under or kind of torture. It's, it's horrible, the pain, the suffering that these people lived before they died and the problem that it still continue. We um, work with survivors of these crimes that for us are not uh, only witnesses to these crimes, but they are the claimants. This is their cases, basically. That's what we from the ECCHR uh, try to, to, uh, to support them in that, in that manner. Um, and on the other hand, this is of course very important uh, evidence also for these case files. We from the ECCHR, we find it important to link these crimes to the people that, are, that bear the most responsibility for it, that are the higher ups, so to say, in the hierarchy, because they are the ones taking the decisions. They have the power to stop these crimes and many times they order them. I think arrest warrant it meant a lot for the Syrian and it was obvious even in the social media, even with the uh, witness that they contact us in ECCHR and they said that thank you, at least we, we, we see it's like a ray of, of light. When we started, we basically promised nothing. We just promised the people we would do everything that a person like Jamil Hassan would have an arrest warrant outstanding against him. And many people said, you're crazy, that's not going to happen. And now it did happen. And this is, of course, it's a very tiny step, but because we were realistic with, with uh, what, we, what we could achieve in the very beginning, we we're all happy because at least it is, in a way, also a very big step because it's an historic step. It hasn't been done by, by Germany before. Yet, this road that we need to go down is incredibly long, and we are moving at a very, very slow pace, but at least we are moving in the right direction.
So on this operational level, uh, we need to strengthen the principle of universal jurisdiction, even in the countries where this is possible today. We have already filed criminal complaints in Germany, in Austria, and now we have just also filed one in Sweden. Because the message is clear. This task cannot be done by one prosecution authority alone. It, it, needs, it needs a concerted effort, just like on the civil society level, where we have a network of civil society actors that come together to work on these cases. Also on the level of the prosecution authorities, they need to gather and to, to, um, to join forces in order to bring these cases uh, strategically forward, because it's such a massive task. No country can do this alone. We need your support. We need the support by the governmental actors so that these investigations can continue, that the war crimes unit can continue their work, that they keep on investigating these cases. We need to stay together as a civil society union, so to say. Um, foundations like the Heinrich, Heinrich Böll Foundation that has supported us so much, this will be something that will be very necessary in, in the long run. And, uh, and my wish is, and, and, uh, is, is, yeah, please don't forget it, but continue to support us. And also to, to, to protect the right of the family that to know their, uh, the, the fate of their loved ones that's uh, missing, that uh, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people. That's the right of the Syrian and also accountability and justice is the right of Syrian.